on getting the uh, okay. the uh, title shot for an interim belt, man. Congratulations. Oh, shit, man. Don't tell me congrats until I actually do something and have the belt around my waist. It's, I mean, it's, it's a big task. Uh, how are you preparing for Rafael Dos Anjos? Uh, I've been, been preparing real hard, man. Been, I got a different girl for each day of the week. We've been working my cardio in the bedroom, you know, doing a lot of uh, hot tub, you know, mis- uh, hot tub time machine, you know, a lot, a lot of sex, you know. I got to get ready to dunk these balls on his forehead. So you're just, wait, okay, so your plan is to teabag him? No, two yeah, bags I'm playing the a him right in the middle of uh, the United Center in Chicago. You know, Michael Jordan was famous for dunking balls there. I'm going to be dunking my balls right in the middle of that arena, and, and people are going to know what's up. Wait, Colby, uh, tea bag or Arabian goggles? What's that? Forget him. Okay, listen. <laughs> so, Colby, so you're fighting those on yours now. You, you can't really be training by just fucking different girls every day of the week. I mean, you're actually taking this seriously, right? Dude, I'm not taking it serious. Why would I take it serious with this little midget, man? He, he couldn't beat me if I didn't train the rest of the camp, man. I, as long as I got my cardio up, which, you know, I'm putting in two-a-days and I'm getting it in, if you know what I mean, with the ladies. That, that's my workout, you know. I'm working hard. You know, I trained my whole life for this. He ain't going to show me something I already seen. Now, who are these ladies? Uh, just random girls from Miami? Yeah, just random girls from Miami, uh, you know, girls from New York, girls from all over, you know. Just, just bang them, just banging away. Now it was supposed to be in Brazil, banging away, and then it got moved to Chicago. Why did it get moved, and how did you feel about that? Yeah, you know, you know, I feel good. Uh, it got moved because they didn't want this great day in American history to be on Brazilian soil. Those filthy animals didn't deserve this, so. You know, I'm happy to give my people what they want, you know, a, a great day in American history. All right, Colby, li- Colby listen, uh, you, me and you are friends. I like, I like you a lot, but I don't think you really think these people are, they're not filthy animals, Brazilians. Uh, what do you, come on. Th- 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 that's the thing where it's like you're, you're putting, grouping people together and that's, that's called being racist um, or nationalist, whatever. You, you don't really think that Brazilians are all filthy animals. It's not either. a race, buddy. I know, I know it's not a race. I know that, that's what everyone says who's racist. They just, or, or a bigot. Oh, it's not a race. But I'm just saying, you don't, you're not really lumping in. You know, why do you call them filthy animals? Uh, you know, let's, let's be honest. Let's look at what, how they treat fighters when they go there. That, you know, I'm not the only fighter that they threw water bo- bottles at, scream, you will die, try and grab me when I'm walking out to the octagon. You know, there's a long history of it. Look at this. You know, what they did to Matt Brown, you know, the way they treat American fighters when they go over there to put on a show for them, it's disgusting. And they, and they are filthy animals, and that place is a dump. So, you know, it, you know everybody has a different opinion, and, and everybody has, you know, thinks differently. Now, but wouldn't those people, like the actual person who tried to grab you, like, okay, let's say he's a filthy animal, right? Or the other guy that, that, that yelled, you will die. He, that guy is, okay, you call him a filthy animal. But to lump everybody together, don't you see what, that's why people are upset about that? Uh, not really, because, you know, I'm not the one lumping them together. If you think you were being a filthy animal, then, then you were. If you saw my apology after the fight, you know, I did, I'm not grouping the people together. It's, it's all the people that wanted to take it that way. They, you know, you don't have to think you're a filthy animal if you didn't think you were. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. So we agreed to disagree there. Uh, now, there we go. Now, do, Dos Anjos. Now, you got into it recently with Bubba Jenkins, who's Dos Anjos' wrestling coach. What happened there? Oh, you know, I didn't get into it. He just, you know, he's just trying to stir the pot. He's just trying to talk a little shit. But, you know, the, the guy has no credible source to talk shit. You know, he just, he sounded dumb, you know, going on one of my friends from Oregon's Instagram page and trying to, trying to talk some shit like like he's something big or something you know so you know it is what it is you know i got no ill will feelings so bubba he you know he's in rafael's corner obviously he's gonna take rafael's side but come june 9th he's gonna know who daddy is now colby i'm picking you to win man i honestly think i think you i think you have what it takes to 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 beat uh, dos años i honestly do i think you're i think you have the wrestling the the the, uh the uh striking i think you got a lot of i think you have the it fact the anger uh, but this dude is, is no joke. I mean, Dos Anjos is a fucking monster. I mean, you saw what he did to uh, uh, the extra, uh, Robbie Lawler. I mean, not many guys could do that to Robbie Lawler. 
Yeah, you know, I, I saw what he got, what he did to Jeremy Stevens too. He got melted by a featherweight. So <laughs> you know, I don't really take. It's true. I don't take too much into account what he's done. You know, he, his last three fights were hand picked opponents at him. I'm trying to fight that guy from Singapore. We were supposed to fight in Singapore. He said, No, no, I don't want to fight Colby. Blah blah blah. So they put him down on the card, and, and they put me on the, you know, higher up on the card. And I got a bigger fight with Dung Hum Kim, the number six guy at the time. So. You know, RDA has been running me for a while, and I'm, I'm just glad we could finally cross horns, you know. But you know what's funny about this, Adam, is all the people that are hyping him up, oh, man, he's so good, he looked unbeatable at 170, this and that. They're going to be the same people that are saying, oh, he's a washed-up lightweight, oh, he should never have been at 170 after I beat him. So, you know, there's just a lot of hypocritical and two-faced fans in this sport, and, and I just look forward to hearing their excuses come June 9th in, in Chicago. I, I definitely agree that a lot of fans are – you know, they're definitely Fairweather fans, and they're, they're all about the next big thing, yeah. and I'm not that guy. I'm mm-hmm. with you when you're bottom, when you're top, when you're back to the bottom, back to the top. I'm a, I'm a fan of the sport and, and of the fighters of all different levels. Um, what happened with Usman? I know that you and Usman don't like each other. Kamaru, he was backstage talking shit, but you didn't engage. You just stayed on your phone. Was that to piss him off more or just because you didn't want to get into a fight there? There was security. What was the deal with that? I mean, why would I pay, pay attention to a kid, to a little kid at the kid's table? I'm the king. I'm at the head of the big boy's table, Adam. You know, I ain't worried about that little scrub, you know. Like, UFC came up to me. They're like, hey, Kobe, be on your best behavior. So, you know, I'm looking down, seeing my phone, that my phone, that my fight got switched to Chicago. And he's trying to run his mouth like he's a thug or something. Like, if he's so thug and he's so hard, why didn't he touch me? Why didn't he do nothing? You know, he's just... He's all talk, Adam. He's looking for attention. You know, he's trying to bark up a tree that he's not ready for. I mean, the kid doesn't even have a ranked win yet, you know. So, you know, he's just looking for attention, looking to, to stir up the pot a little bit. But, you know, I ain't, got enough, I ain't got nothing to do with that kid. You know, I got bigger and better things to do. I got RDA to take care of. And, and then Woodley's next. I'm going to unify my belt. So, you know, he, Cameron Usman's got some proving to do. You know, he's three or four fights away from me at, at, at the best, you know, because after I finish RDA – you know, it's on to Woodley, and after I finish Woodley, it's going to be, you know, Thompson Till winner. So, you know, he's just trying to get some attention. You know, his manager's telling him what to do, Ali, that shady-ass fuck. So, you know, I, I don't really got much to say. The, the little kid's at the kid's table. Now, what about Mike Perry? Is he like, what, what happened with you and Perry? Oh, dude, he's, that guy's the biggest clown in the sport. He talks <laughs> his big game like he's so hard. That guy's a fucking scrub. He's got a horse face trainer, horse face ratchet trainer. I mean... Let's be honest, dude. If you listen to Perry's interviews, the guy's fucking, he's literally the, the product of Cousins fucking in Orlando, Florida. So the guy's a complete scrub. You know, he hasn't done anything in the sport. He just got fucking his ass beat and concussed by a guy and knocked out. So, you know, that kid's, that kid's not even my level. He's going to be fighting in Indian casinos by the end of the year when I'm champion. Well, they're definitely, I mean, you and Perry definitely don't like each other. Uh, I think they broke up, him and that, uh, the girl that, he, that was training him. I, I believe that she posted that they broke up, uh, his, his uh, girlfriend. I credit Colby with the steal. Um, <laughs> now, uh, now, Conor McGregor, we got to talk. Conor McGregor, obviously, we know what happened last week. He threw, he threw a dolly, uh, you know, causing all kinds of chaos. You tweeted out that cocaine's a hell of a drug. Uh, <laughs> is that is that what you think happened? You think he was on some kind of four day coke binge? You think that was a smart move on his part to get attention? What would you have done? How if you, what would you do if you were Dana White? What would you if you, uh, if you were on the bus? And what are your thoughts about Conor McGregor? Oh, uh, you know, my thoughts about Conor McGregor is he's a coked up little leprechaun. And, and let, let's be honest, you know, Adam, I've been stealing all the headlines that you know the last since I fought in October. So I've been in the headlines every month. So he had to go over and do something over the top to steal some of the headlines back. He knew Colby Chaos is the king of the headlines in the media now. So he had to go throw a dolly through a bus to, to get the headlines back on his side. And, and obviously, we all know he's just looking for attention. You know, he's, he's, not, he's not looking to come back and fight. He's not looking, you know, he's got enough money in the bank. He's just looking to get some attention from the media and get, get some hype around him again. But, you know, my thoughts are, is, you know, he's a joke, man. He's, He's a little lightweight, you know. He doesn't want none, none of this at welterweight. He's been talking like he's ready for three belts, but after I get the belt on June 9th, he's not going to say another word about 170. Mark my words. So if you beat uh, Rafael Dos Anjos and Woodley still isn't cleared to fight because of his shoulder surgery, would you want to fight McGregor after that? I mean... Not that I'd want to fight him, but, you know, he's not going to want to fight me, man. After he sees what I do to RDA, 
I'm dunking my balls on RDA's face right in the middle of the United Center on pay-per-view in Chicago. And Conor McGregor's not going to want nothing to do with Colby Chaos Covington. I can assure you that. He's, he's going to know that's a fight he has no chance to win. And, and we know Conor likes to handpick his fights, so he's not going to take a fight that he knows he can't win.